So tell me about your book. Yeah. Um, you, well, one of the things that was surprising that I had heard was your your experience with concussions. Mm -hmm. You know, um, tell me about that. So, when I've had concussions in that flip I was talking about in 1998 at Daytona, I got a concussion from that crash. Uh, I'd had concussions throughout my career at many different points and didn't think anything of them. I thought when you, you know, when you got a concussion, you joked about it with your buddies about how it made you feel and you just rested until it was gone. And you raced through it uh, and eventually it'd go away and you were fine. You know, it was just something that would go away and you never thought anything about, you never thought about seeing a doctor, you never thought about getting treatment you didn't know there was even treatment available for a concussion. You just thought it was something like a bruise, you know. So this is going on throughout my whole career. I was racing at, uh, I was testing at Kansas uh, Motor Speedway in 2012, blew a right front tire, hit the wall at 185 miles an hour, and it screwed me up. And so that was a really not, you know, that wasn't a typical crash, not something that, drivers deal with usually in their career this was something that was unique to me uh and it was just a terrible impact at a bad angle at a very very fast rate of speed and i got out of the car and i knew something was wrong with me and i couldn't you know i couldn't i felt you know just like i'd been hitting the head with a bat uh shocked and shell shocked in a way or just couldn't i couldn't uh shake it off you know you just kind of wanted to shake your head and get it out whatever it was and you couldn't um that's the way i, I failed immediately immediately after that crash we went our test was done because the car was killed so we went over to this place to get some lunch and we're sitting there and i started getting sick nauseous before we ever you know i wasn't eating uh we just ordered we just sat down and i started i'm sitting with my team all my guys and i'm uh starting to i think feel like i'm gonna throw up right there in front of them and i'm getting nervous and i don't i haven't said to them that i feel this way you know so i don't want to tell them i feel this way um but my crew chief steve latart is like my is like a brother um i was like steve i uh am getting sick and something's wrong with me i don't know what's wrong with me but i got to get out of this room it's a busy it's lunch hour and it's full of full of people noises talking chatter uh, shit going on and I got to get the hell out of there um, and as I was getting up to leave my wife come walking in they were she was coming to get me we were going to Washington Redskins Monday night game and uh, sitting on her box with Dan Snyder and uh, whoever else was there so we had them plans to go I said Amy I'm gonna go lay down in the car I just gotta lay down in the car for a minute and I laid down all the way in the car all the way to the airport I'm thinking this is this is bad. This is worse than I've ever felt anything, but hopefully it's going to go away. And so we get the game. We get we went to the Redskins game. We watched the game, uh, did that whole thing. And I went about four weeks of feeling bad and sick for about four weeks, and it finally went away. And I was I knew that was unusual for it to be that long, but in my mind I wasn't – thinking doctor i wasn't thinking treatment i wasn't thinking anything like that it didn't even cross my mind to tell anybody or that i really needed i thought you know i thought that i had been dishonest and not uh you know i hadn't i hadn't been honest with everybody about the way i was feeling but i didn't ever think that it was going to cost me anything so i thought all right i'm feeling better i'm good go to this race i had been racing the whole time right Finally, four weeks later, I'm great. I go to another race. I'm racing. I crashed. And it all came right back, like as bad as it was, if not worse. And that's when I said, I got to go to the doctor. This is bad. I can't, you know, I can't even, you know, I can't keep crashing like this. Just putting these concussions so close together is a bad deal. This is dangerous. And my, I couldn't bite my tongue, like my attitude and my emotions and shit was out of whack like i couldn't control my mm. anger and i was like anybody be anybody say something i didn't like i'm like well, you know i wanted to tell them to fuck off you know right and I, that was just not like me i couldn't i couldn't like keep myself calm and uh everything that 
I heard like made me angry. <laughs> it was the yeah. craziest thing. Even people just talking about stuff would just get under my skin. I'm like, Ugh. uh, real impatient. Um, uh, and there was some new symptoms, but I finally, uh, I went to the doctor and, and, uh, got to, I went to this neurosurgeon in Charlotte, Dr. Petty. He's like, I want you to meet this guy in Pittsburgh. His name's Mickey Collins. He works with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Penguins. And uh, I'm like, all right. I go up there, and I'm thinking I'm going to meet this guy that works to, works with the Penguins and the Steelers, and he sees, you know, players. But he's a, he's a doctor that sees anybody and everybody. Like, there's kids in there, you know, that got hurt playing on the playground. There's workers, uh, con, you know, uh, carpenters, housewives, everybody's in that damn waiting room to see this man. He sees about 25 people a day, and um, he's an expert on head injuries, and he's got, you know, he's just, he's on the cutting edge of whatever the hell the new shit is, he knows it. And he's, you know, his team and his people are investigating it. And so they're, uh, he fixed me. So I go there, and I'm like, this is what happened. This is how it happened. I crashed. I, I hit it. I didn't tell anybody about it. I was sick for over four weeks. I got better. I crashed in this race, and I feel sick again. And he was like, well, these are two different injuries, of two, two different parts of your brain. The first injury, you, you bruised this uh, right front edge of your brain uh, when you hit the wall. He said this, this second crash, uh, you twisted the base of your brain and injured some things in the back of your brain, and that's why you're having the emotional and uh, different things like that. So... Uh, but we, he went deeper into it than that. He was like, you know, we did all these uh, tests and um, visual tests and all kinds of stuff. for for, And I'd go back to, I mean, we did this thing. We did, I went through the gamut for a whole day of doing tests. And then I went back every uh, week uh, before I, you know, and, and in two weeks I was back racing again. I was clear. And uh, so he he took an injury that I hid and took four weeks to heal, and healed it in two weeks. What did he do to heal it? Um, He gave me, I never took any medication on this particular uh, issue. He gave me uh, home exercises and eye exercises. There was, uh, I had problems with focusing and making my eyes work, tracking an object like a bird flying across the sky or anything like that. I couldn't, my eyes couldn't stay on it. If I looked at you, uh, my eyes would bounce off of you. Um, and they just wouldn't stay, you know. If you said, hey, man, I'm going to take a picture, and you held up a camera, and I tried to look at the lens and smile, my eyes would want to jump off of that object. They would want, they didn't want to, to look at what I wanted them to look at and track anything, going anywhere. And what was the cause of that? Um, the, the brain has the ocular stuff, uh, I mean, you can have injury to that part of your brain, or you can have an injury to the vestibular part of your brain that 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 may like, like if you have bad balance, then that your eyes and your balance work together. And so, if you have uh, vestibular issues, that can create ocular issues, and um, that can create um, that that can affect your uh, anxiety and depression and things like. So, all these you can have an injury to one part of your brain that affects four other areas and so and we talk about that in the book mickey comes into the book and i'm i'll talk you know i'll say this is what i was feeling this is what i did and mickey will come in behind me and say this is the medical science behind that and this is how we treated it and why but i would have an injury to one singular area of my brain but i would have four different symptoms affecting four different parts of my brain four different senses and um you know, he would have to hone in on the one that was broken and then know to fix it. And when he started fixing it, all the other ones would start communicating together. The brain would start working again, balance and visual, and all those things would start to work again, and anxiety and all those things would, you know, begin to t- come back in tune. Now, when you said he fixed it, like, what is he doing? Uh, he Well, so he gave me physical exercises to do. I had some balance issues. Basically, if I was if I turned my head uh, or looked up and down, I would get dizzy and sick. Like my stomach would turn if I turned my head left to right. If I looked up and down, just sitting there. Like the best thing for me was to sit on the couch and not move. <laughs> and so, like literally, not move. And 
I felt fine then. But if I moved an inch, man, it was like make it make your stomach nauseous. And so I did a lot of motion. I did a lot of exercises that created a ton of motion with my head, um, lifting heavy balls up and uh, p- passing them over my shoulder this way or that way, taking a ball and turning around and hitting it this way, taking the ball, turning around and hitting that, just doing that for, for hours and hours and hours. And so I would train, basically, uh, I was training myself to, to balance again, you know, training my, my, training my, my body to balance itself again. And if, and my, if I couldn't see a horizon or a flat surface, uh, I couldn't tell which way was up and yeah, it was so bad. And, um, the visual stuff, there was these, uh, I had a string with these balls on it and I would hold the string on my nose and hold it out here. And I had to look at all those balls and it would, my, my, my eyes are focusing just all it's doing is really just making my eyes change focus and from one to the next to the next and back and one to the next and next and back. And there was this eye chart on the wall and it had all these letters and all these numbers on it. And I had to, uh, I had to look at that eye chart and turn my head back and forth this way, but look at that eye chart and count and count uh, do from A to Z but backwards Ooh. do the alphabet so I'd have to look for the letters where's Z you know and go backwards or one one to twenty you know oh one, why are you shaking your head two three yeah and standing up and walking backwards and walking forward and what is this doing to your mind like how do, how does this fix your mind like what is the what's <sighs> I, the process I, you know I don't know what the real I don't know what it's the I've had the problem with me was my vestibular system, so my ability to understand balance and understand horizons and so I was putting my mind in a perplex uh, in a complex environment or making my mind do complex things that you don't do every day. And it's just firing up and these it's, parts of yeah, your brain. And it's kind of like stretching them. this muscle. You know, it's like oh. it's like. They used to say when you would get hurt to go into a dark room and hide and or you know no no electronics no TV just sit in a dark room and wait. Yeah. And what they're what they believe today is that exposure is what helps pushing yourself into these complex environments and doing things that are really challenging for yourself. Even doing that, if I put you in front of that eye chart and made you turn your head back and forth and walk walking two steps forward, two steps back, and doing it would be it been difficult for you. Um, uh, so, but for an injured person, it's super difficult. It has to be really challenging. Um, but it just sort of tunes the mind or retrains the brain to do balance, to, to balance. It retrains the eyes to, to track on objects and to lock on objects and stay on them. And what's crazy is it sounds like physical rehab. Like it is. if you had a knee injury or something It is a physical like rehab. Yes. There's a lot of physical rehab to it. Yeah. There's a ton of it. And we don't think about that when it comes to the mind though. I we know. usually think of the mind as like something that needs to be healed with medicine. Yeah. I agree. Um, all the probably eighty five percent of the work that I did was physical therapy. Did Plant- you change your diet or anything like that? Because the, they say inflammatory causing foods or inflammation yeah. causing foods. I I did not. I did not change. I drank strictly drank water. I didn't drink anything other than water, and uh, I incorporated you know, bananas and things like that into my diet that I never ate before. I didn't because care. of potassium. Yeah. Yeah, and what, what what effect does potassium have on I just, brain recovery? I just hear that it's good for your brain. It's just okay. good for your brain. You just heard. Yeah, I did, not my doctor didn't say start eating this stuff, but oh, okay. it was just you know, I you got you get tidbits like when you go and get injured like that, you're mm-hmm. going to get people texting you and giving you information here and yeah. there, and you kind of take what you want and go ah, you know, I don't know about that, but um, did you ever mess with CBD at all? CBD. You don't know what that is? No. No. Interesting. Um, CBD is a non-psychoactive form of hemp, yeah. and uh, it's a radical inflammation fighter. And a lot of people that have like some pretty significant injuries to the brain, a lot of fighters take it like yeah. right after fights. It used to be, um, it's still questionable federally. Yeah, like they're trying. Like there's some pushes to try to make it illegal just because of pharmaceutical drug companies kind of putting pressure on yeah. them doesn't do anything in terms of like get you high or anything no i actually inflammation. i actually read a little bit about that um just a couple of weeks ago because it um controls anxiety yes and 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 has helped a lot of people with that one of my biggest 
one of the problems that I face just on a you know on the regular every day is is where my anxiety is. Like, is that because of being famous? I don't know. I think it comes from like your childhood and yeah. just things that you experience in life. And like, what are you anxious about? Um, just general social situations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I would avoid. I would. I, I've I've gotten a lot better. Like I go, I can't. I. I, I would avoid concerts, even if I love the band. I would uh, just because there's too many people yeah, there. Yeah. But is it too many people that are going to bother you? No. No. Um, I don't think so. And I like being bothered. I don't mind people coming up to me and saying, <laughs> "Man, that's cool. I know right. who you are." I mean, that shit feels great. But right. it was more about like, am I going to be accepted? Is it my scene? Is I don't know, man. I just always had a lot of anxiety over. Oh, okay. So anxiety about whether or not you're going to be fit in. Fit in. Yeah. yeah okay. So you felt like an outsider yes. when you were younger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that anxiety, I don't know. I still feel, um, I, I don't, you know, so I, that shit I, goes away hard. It takes a long time for that to go away. Yeah. 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 Like my wife, um, uh, she uh, likes ashwagandha. You ever heard of your ashwagandha? Yes. Yeah. So she she likes that, and I take that every once in a while, and I think that shit works pretty good. Yeah. Kind of keeps you calm, and mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, but I've never tried the. I've read about when I was reading about ashwagandha is when I read about that stuff you're talking about. I'll get you some. All right. It, it'll help. CBD is amazing, okay. and you know what's really good? There's some b- muscle balms that work really good on sore joints and stuff. I mean, but like, and nothing I've ever used before. Better than anything. Hmm. CBD just gets right into the muscles and just relaxes all the inflammation. And the best part about it is it's 100% natural and no side effects. Yeah. There's nothing. Right. But in terms of like, there's a bunch of different CBD oils you can take. Mm-hmm. And you just, they, they chill you out. But they don't get you high or anything. Right. You're not weirded no. out. But they just, just calm you down. Right. And I wonder how much that calming down is because of inflammation. Just reducing inflammation and just, it just... It seems that your body has, uh, your body knows what to do with it. Yeah. Your body's like, oh, I know what this is. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I got Ted Nugent into it. Really? Man, Ted Nugent, before he came on here, he was telling me how he's all anti marijuana and this and that. And we had this conversation about it. It makes people lazy. I'm like, I don't think it does, man. I think yeah. people are just lazy. Yeah. And I told him, because I know he's got some serious knee problems, he had all these knee surgeries. He's, you know, he's a madman. He used to jump off the top of the fucking stage and land on the ground and blew his meniscus out. Yeah. I got him on the CBD bomb now. And he, he texted me the other day. He said, There's not a thing I've ever used that's helped me like this before. Really? Yeah, so now I, I'm having cases sent to him, like, every week. Nice. Yeah, he loves the shit. I yeah. mean, he's he wants to endorse it, which is hilarious. Yeah. Like, the Motor City Madman, Ted Nugent, super anti-marijuana, wants to endorse, uh, endorse a, a cannabis product that's helped his knees. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't do anything to you psychologically. It does, right. doesn't affect you. No, yeah. Other I than mean, that's, that's, calm you down. Yeah, that's what I read about it. It's yeah. It doesn't have that part of the, part of the drug that well, makes you Well, my friend's high. son has... Um, it's a type of epilepsy, uh, Brendan Chop, and he started giving his kid CBD oil, and it stopped the epilepsy in its tracks. Yeah, I think I read where they're, um, th- it's been used for that for years. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, to help, uh, for um, God, seizures and stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah for seizures, yeah. It's a, just a radical inflammation decreaser. It just it figures out a way. It does. It has some sort of an interaction with your body where it just reduces inflammation. Hmm. But it's just, it, like I said, it also calms people down, alleviates anxiety, and no side effects. That's yeah. the most important one. Some people, it gives them a weird stomach. They, they don't like the way, but I think they're probably taking too much or maybe it's expired or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I've never had those issues, but I'll get you something. Okay. Should look into that too. All right. Yeah. So, what else did they do with you? Did you do any cryotherapy or anything like that that also would reduce inflammation? And- no, no. Basically, I went and um, in this in 2012 we did basic basic uh, physical therapy and eye therapy, eye eye tests, and different eye exercises. Um. And in two weeks, I was back in the race car. I raced for, that was in 2012. I raced all the way to 2016. Two weeks, you felt 100%. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So with all these crazy exercises you're doing, when did you feel like it had settled in? Like, wow, this is really working. Uh, 
pretty i mean in two if it was a two-week period it wasn't you know it was a day or two i, th- I guess you know i mean i wow. can't even remember i can't even remember that far back a day or two yeah i mean i imagine it was feeling pretty good after a couple of days i'd have to i don't know i mean i don't know if it mm. affected me right away or but i know i was by the time we have we, i take an impact test which is basically kind of measures memory and things like that all kinds of different stuff and my um measurements had come back to my norm you know my basic uh uh your you know they kind of make you take the impact test beforehand so that gets your your blueprint of how you are and uh and then whenever you get injured you take it again and they'll line that up against against that and say okay yeah you're deficient here this is a problem maybe it's not diagnosing a concussion but it wants it, it's asking us to look in this area mm. and um so you have a baseline, and then you have whatever post, you know, your injury or post crash uh, baseline is. Um, so I was matching all my normals on that impact test, and that was kind of the trigger for them to go, man, if you feel good, you look good here. All the things are saying that you're back, you know. And uh, I wanted to go race, so I felt pretty good. Is it a a strange feeling knowing that you can't see what the damage is? Like a, a brain injury is a strange one, right? Because it's affecting everything in your body, but you don't you don't see it. Like if you have a, a broken arm, mm-hmm. you're looking at it, you know it's in a cast, it gets fixed. You know you you're you're aware of it. You're doing rehab on it. You're looking at it while you're doing it. Yeah. There's something about the brain where it's all like you can kind of mind fuck yourself <laughs> and say, eh, I think I think I'm okay. Yeah. And That's why. So in the in the book, I talk about these notes I started taking after that crash in 2012. When I would wreck after that, I would get sick and I wouldn't tell anybody. And so I started writing these notes in my in a journal in my phone. And from 2013 all the way to 2016, I had this long journal of crashes and how I felt. And I would. Uh, crash on Sunday and I'd write in the journal on Sunday night, Monday morning, Monday at lunch, Monday at night, you know, every three times a day, every day until whenever I felt good, which was usually either Wednesday or Thursday of that week. And I was writing these notes because I couldn't tell if I was getting better. The, the, The brain injury or any type of head injury, I mean, if you said, how's it feel Monday? And then you asked me again Tuesday, I'd be like, I really don't fucking know, man. It just, it's there. Right. I don't know if it's better. It just feels bad. And so I would try to write as detailed as I could on a day, on a Monday, and then try to write as detailed as I could on Tuesday and reread Monday and see, hmm, is it better? I can see in the comments or, you know, I can't really remember exactly what I was feeling Monday, but in the comments it seems better, and I would write these notes, right? And so I kept doing this, and I thought I was treating myself. And eventually it caught up with me. Like I had about a dozen concussions in a period of about two and a half years. Wow. And I got to where I couldn't walk. And I called my owner and I was like, man, I need to talk to you. I can't race this weekend. I can't hardly walk. And my balance is so bad that I can't get up off the couch without holding on to something and walking across the room without grabbing stuff as I go. And Jesus. He he was like, we got to go back to the doctor. What are you doing? He was mad. He's like, you know, what are you fucking doing getting to the doctor? Why aren't you at the doctor? And I was like, you're right. I need to go to the doctor. I mean, a concussed person doesn't have good judgment and self-awareness. You know, you're right. just you're just in a freaking, you're in a, it's like being hungover. Yeah. You get the worst hangover. You can't make decisions. And so I went back to Pittsburgh and saw Mickey again, and I had to stay out the entire whole half of the year in 2016 to get better. It took me five months to get well instead of two weeks. Wow. And that time, um, I was on, they put me on medication that would drop my anxiety levels so the anxiety levels would stay down so that I could concentrate on uh, the injury and... What medications? Um, I'd ha- I don't know exactly the names, but um, it was a, to, it was very, very small doses and it would take about three weeks for it to kind of kick in. I'd have to take it for a while before it'd start working. Um, but it just made me real chill. And it made me not analyze myself every single day when I got up. When I got up, I wouldn't go, hmm, is it still there? Is it as bad as it was? Let me walk across the room and see how I feel. Let me go do this and test this and try this and try this and try this all day long and see how I feel. It made me stop doing that because I was driving myself crazy. And um, 
he gave me a lot more physical therapy, basketball, movements, anything that got my head moving. Um, I'd do those exercises for about two weeks. Some of them would stop triggering symptoms. I'd go back to his place in Pittsburgh. We'd go through about 30 more exercises, and I'd take home about 15 that made the symptoms trigger. And I'd do them for about two or three weeks, and some of them would stop working. I'd go back to him. We'd go through more physical exercises till you know, kept doing that process over and over and over. I took the medication for about a year and a half, um, and I had a lot of. They gave me this uh, computer program for my eyes, and I was wearing these. I would wear these three D glasses, and uh, uh, this computer program would try to take these three D objects and go to two D and back to three D. And my eyes would literally try. It would felt like it was trying to rip my eyes apart. It hurt, like physically hurt, when this object would try to go from from uh, 3D to 2D, and it was going very, very slowly. And it felt like it was trying to rip my eyes apart. And imagine your eyes are tethered together. So when you look left, they both go there, right? And they both go wherever you look. They go together like they're supposed to. And mine didn't want to do that. Mine, You couldn't physically see my eyes towed out or going the wrong way. You couldn't see that. But when I try to look over here, they both didn't go to the same place. And that was that action or that that computer program was strengthening that activity of my eyes trying to do something together. And I would walk, so if I, I've got these buffalo on my property and they're across the field, wait, you know, 200, 300 yards out across the field, out the back window of my living room. And if I walked across the floor, every step I took would knock my eyes off of the buffalo. Like they're way out there and I could look at them, but if I took a step, my eyes would shake and I couldn't, I'd have to find them again, you know? And so that would, that computer program would strengthen my ability. It's called gaze stabilization. It would make it to where when I walk, I don't, you know, if I'm walking or bouncing across the room, I'm, I can still look at you in the eyes and, and, you know, like a normal person. Right. And if I, when I was in my, at my worst, I couldn't do that. And so, uh, but that took a long time to fix. And, uh, the book basically is me admitting making those mistakes. Uh, I should have went to him as soon as I got sick again the first time instead of trying to document it myself and, and hide it and, and manage it myself and trying to get to whatever the end of my career was, whenever that moment was, and retire thinking I was going to walk away without anybody ever knowing. Um, and it, And I had to retire after that, after that 2016 year of missing – half a season and going through all that I didn't want to go through it again I had one more year on my contract in 2017 so I finished that season and that was that were you apprehensive while you're finishing that season yeah I didn't want to get hurt I didn't want to go back through that whole process again and go through that rehab again I didn't want to get sick again me and my wife just got married on new years of 2016-17 so we are newlyweds we're getting she's pregnant uh we're gonna have a baby um you know, I didn't want to go through any of that stuff sick. 